Welcome back to my tutorial on using OpenAI along with stable baselines to play video games uh, with, you know, artificial intelligence bots. Uh, in the last episode, we installed everything we needed and uh, trained a really, really simple AI to balance a pole on top of a cart. And it worked pretty well, even after only 10,000 frames. So now, this episode, we're going to do some... Uh, Super Nintendo game. Specifically, I'm going to do F-Zero because that is a game that I think is excellent. Um, it has come to my attention that uh, the new version of TensorFlow, which is 1.11, is not super compatible with either Baselines or OpenAI. I'm not 100% sure what it is. So we actually have to uninstall it and uh, install the last version of TensorFlow. So we're going to go TensorFlow... And TensorFlow dash GPU. I already did this, so it's probably going to say the wrong version. But um, this is what you guys have to do. Yeah, see, mine says 1.10. So if you have 1.11, you need to downgrade to 1.10, which is as easy as doing the following. Yeah, let's get rid of it. Okay, so to install uh, 1.10, you go pip install. TensorFlow equals 1.10 TensorFlow TensorFlow dash GPU equals 1.10. This is another really good reason why you should be using a uh, virtual environment um, because you can keep different versions of TensorFlow in different virtual environments. So if you were working on something that required 1.11, um, you wouldn't need to uninstall and then every time you wanted to use it, you could just use a different virtual environment. Once you get used to them, it's really handy. It seems weird at the start, but it's really the way to go. Okay, so now we have the correct version of TensorFlow. Uh, we should be able to set up our test.py file to... Oh, did we install OpenAI Retro? Probably not. So what is that? How's that? Jim-retro. Pip install Jim-retro. Okay. So you need to install Jim Nash Retro, and uh, then once you've installed it, you actually need to import the ROMs. And I'm going to uh, show you where that is. So in your stable, in the folder you created the virtual environment in, there should be a folder called lib. So this is where we put test.py in our cart pull thing, and the uh, this is our main base virtual environment. So in lib python 3.6 site packages, we have to find the folder called retro, which is only there once we've installed jim-retro. And inside of that, there's data uh, and stable. And stable is the games that are currently supported, so they have to have ROMs. If they don't have a ROM, it won't work. Uh, not all games are included here. For example, there's no F0. So to do that, we have to create F0. Whoops. What the heck just happened? Wrong folder, guys. So we're in stable. We're going to create the folder F0, OK? Uh, inside the folder F0, we need the um, SHA file. This is how the import function detects the correct ROMs. The SHA files look like... Eh. Uh, oops. They look like... They're just a little string. A hash, in fact. An SHA hash. Uh, to get them, you can type in the function SHA sum and then the name of the ROM, whatever they are. And that'll give you a value which you can put in the rom.sha file, just like this. Save it, close it, and then if you have that ROM, you can import it. So we're going to use python-m retro.import home lucas, where did I put it? Import me. So hopefully this is going to work. Imported one games. Okay, so we imported F0. Okay, so 
you just do it wherever you have your ROMs. I don't know. I don't know the legality of this. I recommend you own the game. I personally own a copy of F Zero. Uh, <laughs> again, I don't know. You should. You should. You should own the game. I think. Okay, now let's modify our test.py so we can uh, run F0. First things first, import retro instead of Jim because we're not using Jim anymore. And we're going to uh, retro.make requires a couple of different things. So we're going to do F0. This is the name of the folder that your, ROM, your F0 ROM is in. And then you need to a state. Um, probably don't have any states set up now. If you watch my old video series, uh, you, you can use the Jim integration uh, software to um, import games and save states and stuff. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you can I don't know which episode it is. It's in the previous playlist. The neat Python playlist shows you how to do all that. Uh, what we're going to do... Okay, so you see the the ROM has been imported, and that's the SHA file. We're gonna go to my old my old installation and grab the data file, the training file, scenario, metadata, and a save state or two. Go. I made all these myself, so you'll have to go for whatever game you're using. Some of them already come with data files and scenario files and stuff, and save states. Some of them don't. If they don't, you have to create them. Again previous playlist, the neat Python playlist to, to see that. Uh, for the, just so you can see what I'm doing here, the data file and the, I have two different scenario files, training and scenario. I train on the training file because it has a special set of rules that work good for training F0. You can do whatever you want in any of these files, but let me just show you what I've done. So first, I ha these are the variables that I'm tracking with the um, OpenAI retro library. I'm tracking the health of the car, its position on the track, that's how long, how far through a lap it is, whether or not it's reverse, the speed, and the X and Y coordinates uh, that the game tracks the X and Y as if the game is one, has like a 2D map. And my training file, you have to set up two things in your training file, when done happens, so like, for example, if it's Super Mario, when you die, that's, that would normally be a done scenario uh, and you need a reward function so my done is tracking health and I've currently set it to be uh, be done if less than this is the value of the full health bar in uh, F0 so when you first start a lap before you've hit anybody any walls anything like that the health value is 2048 basically what I'm saying here is reset the emulator if the car touches the wall um, down here, I penalize if the health decreases. In this particular situation, that'll never happen because it ends, it's done if it hits a wall. But uh, you can change this to, for example, 100, and then it'll hit a wall a bunch of times until the health gets down to 100. But we want 2048 right now. Um, also, if it goes in reverse, if it reverse equals 1, that's the value of reverse in this game. And I'm giving a reward of 10 for every... Uh, position increase in the game. They're not. They're not like pixel by pixel. They're maybe like, I don't know, every five seconds at max speed. Less than that. Every second at max speed. So you get ten. And I'm giving point one uh, if the speed is above one. That's because I want him to go fast. Okay. Um, back to our training file. Nope. And nope. Okay, so we imported retro. Uh, we're still going to use PPO2, but now we're going to want to use a CNN policy, which is a convolution neural network policy. Oh, yeah, we're going to set our scenario to training. Uh, we're still going to use the dummy VEC env for now. We'll get back to that. Uh, oh, yeah, this is all set up before when we loaded it. So let's get rid of that. We're going to model, learn. So we want a CNN policy. CNN policies are f when you want to use the actual pixels of the screen. So since we're going to be looking at the actual game file instead of some data from the file, we're going to use a CNN. You can also use the MLP po policy. What it does is it then takes the pixels and it flattens them into an array. The CNN is better for 2D stuff, though. 
We're going to still teach it for 10,000 steps because this is just a quick demo. Let's change the name to F0 PPO2. And guys, that's it. So here we go. Let's run this python test.py. Uh, like before, it's not going to show us the testing. It's just going to give us some output. Oh no, what have I done? ROM files for your game. Oh, did I not name it F? I think I just named it F0, did I? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, okay. Now it's working. So you got to make sure that that specifies the folder that your uh, the ROM you want is in. It's at the, oh, here we go. It's training. So at this point, if you are using the wrong TensorFlow library, the 1.11, it'll uh, crash here. So you need 1.10 for this to work. So we're going to wait for the time steps to reach 10,000. And then hopefully, if we've done it correctly, it'll, uh, it'll try drive on for us. 10,000 steps is not enough to learn how to drive in F0. I'm pretty sure I used 10 million steps when I ran it. Um, but yeah, let's hope this goes pretty quick. Uh, as soon as this is done, then we will start, uh, we will multi-process it, and um, we may even do some, we may even change the inputs and outputs a little bit, Ch make the, uh, use, use a tool called the Sonic Utils, Sonic Discretizer, I think it's called, which is a great little library uh, built for the contest, the OpenAI Sonic contest. Uh, I can use it anywhere, it's great. Getting close. Getting close. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I apologize. It'll save the thing though, so we can, we can load it and do it properly. Boom, there you go, guys. That's him driving, he's jumping all over the place. Oh, he just decided to take a break there. Uh, no, are we gonna go? Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> you can see on the screen below it, it's all the inputs. There should be 12 per line. Those are the uh, button presses. So it's uh, kind of randomly pushing buttons at this point in time. It seems to know that touching the wall is bad, but it's too skittish. So that's it, guys. That's how you train. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's it for now. We'll, uh, the next episode, we'll do multiprocessing and the discretizer. Okay. See you guys.